Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. Today, I'm ready to get back on the pieced version of Express Your Love and work on another form of foundation piecing. And this version really kind of came about, I had a lot of different green fabrics, and I wanted to create that kind of modeled effect, uh, all the different shades of green that you see in trees. And that was really what I was going for. What I ended up uh, kind of stumbling, kind of going back to, was Bargello quilting. And I made a Bargello quilt called Waves several years ago. And here's a photo of that. So I really love this look. It was a, a really beautiful quilt to work on, uh, but I wanna work with just one inch pieces for this particular quilt. And so I've gotten started in the same traditional Bargello way with lots of one and a half inch strips sewn together into a tube. So let me get on the machine and show you what I'm talking about. So here's my tube. And basically all I did was I cut one and a half inch strips of every single fabric that I wanted to use. I sewed them all together and as I sewed them together I pressed the seams open so they're nice and pressed open right now. And then once I had them all, um, the nice long rectangle, all I did was fold it right sides together and do another seam line and that formed it into a tube, just like this. And then of course everything's nice and pressed open so it's all ready to go. So that's my tube. Now from that tube I cut my strips. Now all you do is you just lay this out on your cutting table. Let me just kind of shake it out. So this is like this. You lay it out just like this and you trim up this edge and you start cutting your pieces right like this. And the nice thing is the seam allowances are straight lines so you can line your ruler up with the straight line from the seam allowance, uh, uh, from the seam line. So that's what I line my ruler up with. Okay, so the very first strip, you know, I want to have some extra beyond my foundation, beyond the edge of my foundation. So I cut my very first strip is actually two and a half inches wide, but all the rest of them after this are going to be cut one and a half of inches wide because I want all of the pieces to finish at one inch. Now, with Bargello quilting, you don't work with a foundation, and it's very precise quilting. It's very precise piecing. And uh, the really nice thing about working with the foundation is you don't have to be quite so precise, so I'm not worrying too much about every single one of these uh, seam lines matching up. I'm not going to be super, super cautious about every single line matching up. My main goal here is to create a really beautiful scrappy effect. That's really my goal. Okay. So I'm gonna basically just kind of lay this out and I've got some excess here and this is the nice thing about working in a tube is you're always gonna have these nice long strips and I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate how much, uh, here's my tip of my piece and I wanna have a good bit of seam allowance. Don't want that tip to hit right at that seam. So I'll pull it back just a bit. And you wanna save every scrap from this because when we get down towards the tip of the hair, you're gonna need it. And the other nice thing about having the seams pressed open is if you're really careful, you can line up your scissors right in that seam. And here I clipped it, and I didn't actually clip the fabric, I just clipped the stitches that were holding those two pieces together. So I still got this. I can cut this down to one and a half inches, and this can absolutely be used in one of the more narrow sections down here. So, okay, so this strip is nice and cut and trimmed up, ready to go. Okay, so I lay my next strip on top, and I want to make sure that I'm not getting, you know, the same two colors of fabric on top of one another, you know, that typical kind of thing. You want to just make sure that you're getting a nice arrangement. And you know what? Looking at this, I could make it really matchy-matchy. I could really work hard to make these seam lines all match up on the same lines, or I could make my life a lot easier by just simply ignoring all of those seam lines and instead just letting the pieces lie where they fall. And I think that's really what I'm going to go with because otherwise I'm going to be spending most of my day sitting here pinning this and making sure everything's lining up and I don't really want to mess with that today. Now I can trim some of this back so that way I can work just straight across the edge. I still have more than an inch and a half all around my foundation piece, so that's just really, that was excess. Okay, so I am pretty happy with this arrangement, and all I do, buzz it through. And just 
just to remind you, whenever you do this first line of any foundation, the pieces are always right sides together. So there's a wrong side facing towards me. And once I finish this seam, then I'll only be working with one strip at a time. And that makes it easier. This first strip, this first foundation piece is always the trickiest, simply because you're working with two pieces at once. I'm also making sure that all these seam allowances are staying pressed open. Again, I think that that is the best way to handle seam allowances, always pressing them open, simply because you have a lot less bulk to deal with in the quilting. Okay, I'm gonna just take this, here's my foundation line right here. I'm gonna stitch, make sure I stitch down to at least about an inch and a half beyond that, but I don't need to stitch all the way off because that would waste some of my strip and I'm really going to be kind of frugal with this simply because, you know, piecing this whole thing together is going to be time consuming and I don't want to waste it if I can help it. Okay. But here's another tip. Don't cut it when it's folded like this because if I clipped it, there would be a good chance that I clip it in the wrong direction and it might not cover as much as I want it to cover. So I fold it out and make sure I have it unfolded and just kind of finger press that in place and then reach in here with my scissors. Double check. Let me lift it up so you can see better. Kind of finger press this. Here's where my stitching stopped. Grab my scissors and just clip it on the diagonal like that. And I can absolutely use that piece again. And you can see that's more in line with our foundation line right here. That angle is more in line. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit this with my iron so it's nice and secure and then grab the next piece. All right, so I've grabbed another ring and remember we're cutting these one and a half inches wide. So the little squares on the surface are gonna finish about one inch. And um, here's a little bit of advice. If you're really wanting a nice modeled effect, if you don't want the same two colors right next to each other, go on ahead and find the color set that uh, you cut the previous time. So just like this, those are identical. And now slide it up about uh, four or five squares. And you know, you might have to play with this just a bit, you know, just to see, cause you know, I had to repeat several colors in order to make this work. Uh, you might have some situations where you end up with colors matching. It's really no big deal. Uh, I'm just kind of playing with this a little bit. Once you figure out where you want to clip it, just uh, make sure to double check where you're at and where you need to trim that away. I'm thinking between this piece and this piece. And you can use a seam ripper or you can use scissors for this. All I'm doing, because that seam is pressed open, it's really easy to just insert my scissors right there on the edge, right in between the two pieces, and just very gently clip, and it will clip the piecing line, the, the threads, but not the actual fabric. So this is ready to go. Now flip it over, and again, I'm not bothering to match up those seam lines. I am not going to make this, you know, a, a boxy arrangement. I've, I've decided that it will be far easier to have the seam lines mismatching and I think it will even look better and that's one thing that's really nice about foundation piecing is you know you can do it either way if you wanted to have them exact, exact you can make them exact I'm not really wanting to do it that way and that's fine too and all I do at this point is just make sure that this new strip is lined up with the edge of the previous strip And again, you don't have to have an accurate quarter of an inch seam allowance with this. You could probably get away with an eighth, an eighth inch seam allowance so long as both layers are caught. Um, I'm using a quarter inch just because that's my habit. But you could use a smaller seam allowance and that would save you even more fabric, obviously, because less of the fabric would be being eaten up in that seam allowance. Okay, as I get closer to this edge, I again, sometimes I'll kind of flip this open and kind of guesstimate how it's going to look and just go on ahead and do a trim. Just 
just really carefully and it's fine if you trim it a little bit big the first time and then uh, trim it up a little bit more later you just don't want to ever clip too close see how this one is taking shape and basically let me orient this so it's upright all I'm going to do is to continue building off this one line I'm not going to angle this I'm going to keep everything very square building up off this bottom and moving forward moving up this foundation until it's entirely filled uh, it's a pretty simple technique you know it's just it's pretty much the same steps that we used in the red uh, foundation piecing, just simply st stitching strips. The only thing we've done extra really in this is just making that strip a piece strip uh, and having all these different beautiful colors of green incorporated into the strip itself. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you've enjoyed learning this way of strip piecing with all these different green fabrics uh, all mixed together. And so it's a piece strip. It's a little bit like Bargello quilting. That's what it reminded me of, mostly because I formed that tube and cut everything from that. But really, Bargello quilting is its own monster. And that's a lot of fun, too. So if you're interested in something along those lines, definitely just do some searches and learn more about that form of quilting. I really want to encourage you to follow any inspiration that you have. If you see something, uh, start digging into it, figure out what it's called, run some Google searches. You're going to find a lot of information and chances are you're going to find an awesome quilter that does tons of those types of quilts and hopefully she's written a book or shared some information about it so that you can learn too. Uh, learning quilting, there's such a vast hobby, it's such a vast craft, there's so many different facets to it. Um, just how much fun I've had in the last couple of weeks working on this piece version. And all of these are, are either traditional or slightly non-traditional forms of piecing, but it's just been a lot of fun to play with and to share. So I hope that you will follow those little inspirations and keep uh, discovering new things about quilting. So my name is Leah Day and this has been a video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. Find hundreds of videos on free motion quilting and now some piecing and eventually some applique all at freemotionproject.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.